Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group, hanging out here with Zach Briggs for day two on the Project Kevin decommissioning video series. So what we're doing is we've got an old KUKA, um, what is this? It is a 6S, I think, no, 662 series robot, 662-100, that we've had for, God, we've had this thing for like three, four years now, easy. Um, and. Kevin is the first big robot we ever got donated. We've had it for a long time. It's been a great static demonstration, but we wanted to have something that was more tactile for kids to be able to come in and really see the inner workings of a robot. And this is the only one that we have that we could do that to. So we're going to take it apart, get all the nifty pieces out of it, and put those on display. And we're going to make a video talking about all the really cool stuff. Uh, that'll, that'll be the wrap up for this. And all the extra bits we're going to make into other projects. Some stuff will go out for recycling and just, we have no idea. We're, we're just doing this because we can. But when we decommission a piece of equipment around here, we do what's called an equipment autopsy. And that's what this is. It's, it's an equipment autopsy. It's just taking stuff apart because things are cool and we want to learn how they work inside. So Zach and I are going to provide you with snappy patter as we do this banter. As it banter. And we're going to discuss various pieces as we take them off and show you what things are and how they work and, and all the cool stuff that geeks get into. So, yeah, you guys follow along and we're going to have some fun. All right, um, I wanted to cover the thing on the bolt real quick before we launch into that nightmare down there. All right. All right. Then we get the uh, back housing slips already, too. Yeah, we've got those loose. That, that, we've got to take these off. And we're, we're basically, our goal for the day is we want to get the arm off get this off, hopefully this assembly, um, the counterbalance arms down here, and a lot of the internal stuff. If, if we have a perfect day and everything really rocks, we'll end up with just the base, the axis one bearing, and the, the two upright pillars, and we'll get rid of everything in the middle. It took us two days just to get the head off, so we'll see, but yeah. All right, first thing I want to cover was this is a ball and Allen wrench, and they are quite nifty. Here, well, there's Mikey's close up. Okay. Yeah. All right. So with an Allen wrench, you want to be careful because the ball end ones are prone to stripping because what you get, the advantage is you can put this in and wiggle it all the way around. You get a really wide range of motion, which is good for getting at odd angle stuff. The downside is you don't have quite the engagement area, so it, they strip out a little easier. So you've got to be careful with them. And this is particularly troublesome in this instance because I have to use a cheater bar in here. When you, need to when you need to apply a lot of torque on an Allen wrench, you usually hold the long end and put the short end in the thing. And that works great because then for high speed stuff, you put the long end in and just spin it with your fingers. But in this instance, I can't do that because I'm, I'm still a centimeter out here and I can't get any closer without going in there. And that's, if, if I could probably do that, but it's just asking for an injury. So I'm gonna put this in here and attempt to not break it. Now what I'm using, for my torque enhancement system is my torque enhancer. This is a piece of just extruded aluminum. It might be 80-20, I don't know. It came in as just a part of just generic stock that we have. But the way this stuff is shaped, it's got nice rounded edges and it's good to hold on to. It's the right size. And it's got a small hole down the middle and it's really strong stuff. So you slide the little hole over your Allen wrench. Now, the minute you do this, you void the warranty because you are now applying way more force to the Allen wrench than the Allen wrench was intended for. You are using the product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. So if you break the tool, you're on your own. But I do this all the time because I'm a skinny little guy. So this is what I got. And you balance it down here. You don't want to hold the wrench because when it pops, it's going to send a snap vibration up the wrench and it really hurts your hand if you're holding the wrench and you do that. So you hold up here and you want to make sure you have safety protect or eye protection on for this because if it breaks pieces can fly out but put a hand down here put a hand up here and nice and even don't ram it do it nice and slow and smooth and you'll get the big pop and once it pops then these come out with just fingertip pressure nice and easy but there's a rather serious lock washer and and these are obviously put in a long time ago by somebody who really wanted it in there a little German dude but like you so just like Rah! some little dude like named Gunther. Yeah. That, that's Gunther's job. That he he puts those bolts in. Again with the Belgian jokes. Yeah, yeah. See, I, like I, yeah, yeah, I like this crowbar. This crowbar's a friend of mine. We had a, a touching moment yesterday, and I'm glad to be back at work. It's got a giraffe on it. 
Hey, we've got a viewer out there. Um, Manda is a, a big fan of ours here. She's, she's got a thing for giraffes. So there, there's, we have a little giraffe on the crowbar for Manda. See? Mm -hmm. It's a great night. Yeah, okay. All right, um, so I got that off. I'm going to do the inner plates, and while I'm doing this, you can start on the fun down there. So tell them what you're doing, and I'm going to just get these four little bolts up. What we got here is we got the main control arm for the robot. We disassembled it yesterday and pulled it down, and today we want to try to get this freed up from the rest of the body here. Um, in order to do that, inside here we have a snap ring that has to come out, and then hopefully we're going to be able to wrap a chain on this and pull it forward. So that's the fun right here. Um, if you can get the snap ring out. Yeah, if you can if get the snap, snap, snap ring out. <laughs> As uh, Chris was observing earlier, this is uh, set up with a, uh, a friction drive. It uh, uses a slightly uh, oblong wheel. Yeah, so, here, you want to take a minute and talk about that? Sure. There's uh, All right, I, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but we'll, we'll get into the details on this later. But down in here, there's a smooth can, and there's a drive shaft that goes down the middle. And the out the outer ring of this can, you can't really see it, but on the outside of this can there are splines, it's, it's toothed, it's a gear. And on the inside of the outer housing, it also has teeth. And yeah, well the drive shaft is up here, and that's, that's that, mm -hmm. over there. So it's, we'll, we'll go into all the details on it and the various pieces and everything on that in one of the follow-up videos, but it is pretty cool. Um, once you get that off, I'm going to crack the housing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm half tempted to try cracking that housing right now and see what we get. Yeah, let me give it a shot. I'll grab the chisel. Um, fine. Here, I got the chisel. If I had a hammer. I got a hammer. All right. Right over the oil pit. Uh, I love working with a moat. All right. Now, what do you think of this, Zach? Here? Here? Or here, I got a little thing here. I'm um, guessing it's gonna be the same as this side, so you're gonna wanna try to start here. This is not pleasant. Now, just for the people watching at home, um, the chisels we're using here are not wood chisels. These are cold chisels. Do not do this with a wood chisel. It will, if, if, where am I? If, if you do this with a wood chisel, it's going to shatter. You'll send off pieces. Never use a hammer and chisel without safety glasses. But do this with a cold chisel, and you might stand some kind of a chance. On a lot of the pieces of this particular robot, it's two pieces of metal really tightly butted up against each other and rusted in place, so we're having to use a chisel to crack the seams. It hasn't been kind to our chisels, but it has been working really well. Yeah, see, sometimes you just got to give it a little love. Or, you know, smack it with a hammer. <laughs> I'm trying really carefully not to go too far in. Because I've got... Can we move that out of the way? Uh, bring the forklift up a little. Go ahead. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, bigger crowbar. Because now, see, we use a chisel just to pop the seam. Then we can use a crowbar. Oh, okay, we're going to want to catch that. You got it? Now you can really see the splines on that. Here, show that to the camera. That's pretty. That's a, uh, a friction drive. And you can see 
uh, you can see all the splines inside and then this is the outside splines and that piece is going to suck to get out but now at least we can get a grip on it so set that over there in a the pile yep. 